good afternoon to everyone who are watching um, via WebEx and joining us via Facebook. Good afternoon also to our discussants, uh, Mr. Uh, Jimmy Shook from the SWD and Ms. Padilla of the Baco Central ng Pilipinas. Uh, so this afternoon, I will be presenting our study titled uh, Giving Cash to the Poor, a Study of Pantawid Pamilya Cash Grants, Generosity, Frequency, and Modality. Our research team uh, includes myself, uh, Dr. Orbeta, and uh, our former research analyst, Ms. Nina Araos. Uh, for my presentation, uh, I will be following this outline. Uh, we will briefly um, discuss the background and objective of the research, followed by a brief discussion of the design and methodology, uh, and then the results. And finally, to end the presentation, I will try to um, summarize the results and give the corresponding recommendations for each of the results. Okay, so to start, um, uh, this was already mentioned by Dr. Orbeta earlier in his um, speech, uh, but the research is an early attempt of the Institute to examine the uh, four-piece program implementation. Um, this is uh, in light of the enactment of RA 11310, which institutionalized the program. Um, in particular, this study looks at three aspects of the program implementation, particularly its payment system. So the three aspects uh, that we have looked at uh, include, uh, first, uh, the benefit level or the amount of cash transfers that the beneficiaries received. And then the second one is the frequency or how often the beneficiaries receive their cash grants. And then the last aspect is the mode of payment delivery or the manner through which the beneficiaries uh, receive and access their cash grants. So this slide um, shows the conceptual framework that we followed in the study. Uh, what is shown here is the pathway through which the program is trying to achieve its desired outcomes. Um, as mentioned earlier by Ms. Sheila and uh, Dr. Orbeta, the program goal is to break the intergenerational tra uh, transfer of poverty. Um, but uh, what is uh, unique in this um, uh, diagram is that we include the three aspects of the payment system that the research study is trying to examine uh, and show its role in the achievement of these desired outcomes of the program. So uh, in terms of generosity, uh, if the benefit levels are high enough, uh, we assume that it is able to encourage compliance to conditions and also augment the income of the household beneficiaries. Um, if the grants are provided at appropriate frequencies, um, they are available to the beneficiaries when they need when they need the grants, and also their saving constraints are relaxed. And lastly, um, if the grants are uh, delivered with minimum cost to the beneficiaries, uh, the higher is the likelihood for the desired outcomes of the program to be achieved. So for the research design, there are four components. Uh, the first one is the desk review of literature and administrative data. This includes the year review of the data of the uh, program implementers, as well as the issuances that the uh, program is uh, following, the policy guidelines and uh, memorandums that uh, the program implementers have issued. Um, the second component is uh, the primary data collection that our research team did. We conducted key informant interviews and focus group discussions among um, program implementers and program beneficiaries. Uh, the third component uh, looked into the um, difference in the magnitude of impact of the program um, based on the mode of payment that uh, the uh, that the beneficiaries are a part of. And then the fourth component, which is the online survey of the SAP implementation, was a lot was a, um, an addition to the uh, research project toward uh, the latter end of the uh, research where we wanted to collect insights and experience from the beneficiaries regarding uh, their experience in the receipt of the social amelioration um, program financial assistance, which we believe um, uh, shows how well the payment system of the, uh, of the program functions. Okay, so this is just um, the list 
of uh, the uh, study sites uh, for the primary data collection that the research team did. Uh, as mentioned earlier, we did focus group discussions. So we have identified 16 barangays uh, from the third impact evaluation study site. Um, and for each barangay, we conducted one focus group discussion. Uh, this is uh, among the beneficiaries. And we made sure to choose at least one urban and one rural barangay for, for um, uh, one city or municipality. And we also did key informant interviews from uh, uh, with the program implementers. So we did KIIs with uh, the frontline staff of the program. Um, they are the municipal links as well as the municipal roving bookkeepers assigned in the study sites where we conducted the FGDs. And we also did uh, interviews with the national level program implementers. So that includes the National Program Management Office and the financial um, unit of the SWD in charge with the program um, payment. Uh, lastly, we also did AKII with representatives of the Land Bank of the Philippines. Okay, uh, to explain what we did with the uh, uh, um, third wave impact evaluation data, um, basically what the research team um, did is to compare the magnitude of impact of the program um, on subsets of beneficiaries that we grouped according to their cash grant modality. So we compare the program impact on uh, subsets of uh, beneficiaries. Uh, the first subset is the group that uh, received their cash grants through over-the-counter transactions, while the other group uh, received uh, their cash grants through the uh, cash cards or ATM cards. So... Okay, for the final component of the research design, uh, uh, this slide shows uh, the online survey that we did to collect the information on the SAP among the four piece beneficiaries. The survey was launched in April uh, last year. Um, majority of the responses we collected uh, were um, collected from April to May 2020. Um, if, you, uh, if you can recall, this was the time when the um, enhanced community quarantine was still in place in uh, Luzon. So in total, there were um, 886 respondents that we used in the analysis. And uh, since the survey was launched online, a uh, majority of the responses were from um, NCR and uh, urban areas. So just to put the, the results later in context. Okay, so speaking of results, uh, I will be now discussing uh, the observations that our research team found in the study. Um, for, uh, for the presentation of the results, we will also follow the three aspects uh, that we looked at. So we first go to the benefit level and then we will proceed with the discussion for the observations on frequency as well as modality. Okay, so to begin our, our results for the benefit level, um, we also, our research team looked at the um, available international evidence on the um, impact of CCTs depending on the size of the cash transfer. So generally, what the evidence is telling us is that larger cash transfers are associated with bigger impacts in um, household expenditure and poverty reduction. We also um, noted evidence on improvement in um, uh, health outcomes, uh, particularly better health, uh, height for age among children, and frequent health center visits. We also observed evidence on uh, increased savings and investments for CCTs with higher um, transfer levels. Uh, however, for education, the evidence is more mixed. Um, there are evidence that suggests positive impact uh, associated with higher transfer while there are also um, uh, evidence that show no impact or even reduction in desired outcomes. What this uh, slide shows now is the history of the cash grant amount uh, per month through the years in the four piece. So as, as most of us know, 2008 was the year when the program was started. So what you can see here is that from 2008, 
up to the middle of 2014, the amount of cash grants remained at their nominal value of 500 for health and 300 per child for education, regardless of the education level of the child. Um, there was a slight increase in mid-2014 where the education grant uh, was uh, divided to two types. We now have the 500 per child in um, secondary. And then uh, in 2017, following the State of the uh, Nation address of President Duterte, uh, an additional subsidy was given to the four-piece beneficiaries. We now have the rice subsidy, which is 600 per household. The more uh, the most recent increase in the cash grants happened in 2020, uh, following the enactment of RA 11310, where the health uh, grant was increased to 750. And we now have a third type of education grant, which is uh, uh, 700 per child in uh, senior high school. So what I'm trying to show here is that from 2008 up to uh, 2014, the nominal values of the grant remained the same. And there was only very slight increase up to 2016. And the more significant increase happened only in 2017 and 2020. This is more clearly illustrated in the graph on the left, where we show that from 2008 up to 2017, there has been a 5% reduction, a 5 percentage point reduction in uh, the share of the real value of the grants over the uh, 2006 poverty threshold, um, which was the threshold used during the targeting of eligibility uh, of the Forbes beneficiaries during the uh, first round of listahan. Um, the graph on the, uh, on the, the right uh, is from a study by Acosta and Velarde, which shows the international comparison of the CCTs uh, of the four Ps versus other CCTs, where it shows that um, the generosity of the program is actually in the bottom 20%. Okay. During the FGDs, we asked the beneficiaries how they spend the cash grants that they receive from the program. And as you can see here in the word cloud, it's very clear that according to the beneficiaries, uh, most of the cash grants is spent on uh, is spent on school expenses of the children. Uh, the next categories of expenditure are usually food and health expenditures in the form of vitamins. Now, during the uh, focus group discussions, we asked the beneficiaries what their opinion is on the generosity of the of the program. Um, we asked them what they think would be the optimum cash grant amount and whether the cash grant uh, amounts that they are currently experiencing are, su are sufficient to um, address uh, their constraints in spending. Um, so in general, um, even though the respondents reported that their household budget is not enough, or uh, they're still struggling to cover their expenses, expenses um, most are reluctant to suggest an optimal cash grant amount because um, they are happy with whatever amount that the government chooses to give them and also they note that um, funding could also go to other programs uh, for others who are also in need. Um, they also, uh, some of the beneficiaries that we talked to also cited that there is also, uh, there is already an increase due to the uh, Republic Act 11310 and they are already satisfied with the amounts under the law. Of the, f uh, of the few who said that they would want to um, have the cash grants increase, they cited the reason of having the need to cover the cost of rising prices. Um, this is consistent with the opinion also of the program implementers. Um, they said that any increase in cash, cash grant amount would be beneficial for the beneficiaries. And they also said that um, because of the prices of food and other commodities that has been increasing in the past years, um, there may be a need to uh, to look at the um, level of the cash grant amounts received by the beneficiaries. Okay. For the frequency, um, the international evidence is more mixed uh, compared to the uh, size of cash transfers. Um, 
what is um, evident, however, is that uh, more frequent transfers usually uh, result in consumption smoothing, while lump sum or less frequent production of cash grants are more um, associated with uh, savings as well as investment. Again, the evidence for education is um, uh, less conclusive, but what was observed in the evidence that um, is available is, um, in, uh, aside from the frequency, what matters is uh, the timing of the receipt of the grants. So in a number of studies, it has been observed that uh, if the cash grants are provided just before enrollment, um, there's a significant increase, although small, in enrollment rates of children. Uh, this slide uh, shows the current payment schedule of the program. So as discussed earlier, uh, as mentioned earlier by Dr. Arbeta, the cash grant is provided to the beneficiaries bi-monthly. So the payout schedule happens every two months. Uh, we asked the beneficiaries whether they want to have um, any changes in this um, uh, current payment frequency. And surprisingly, uh, there's no... Uh, there's no strong demand among the beneficiaries to have more frequent um, payouts of cash grants. Uh, out of the 16 barangays, nine uh, said that they want the, the payment frequency to be retained, while six uh, of the barangays, they, they wanted the uh, cash grants to be uh, provided monthly to them. Okay, as for the reason for, for these two arguments, uh, those who wanted to change to monthly payout said that um, a more frequent uh, provision of cash grants would cover emergency or uh, urgent expenses. Um, they would all, it would also mean that they would um, avoid needing to take out loans to tide over the household expenses while waiting for the next provision of the grant. Um, while those uh, who said that they would like to maintain the status quo um, they said that um, uh, the bi-monthly provision would, uh, would mean um, that they are receiving a larger amount compared to the monthly provision. And also a, uh, a major concern that was raised by this group of beneficiaries is that um, a more frequent provision of cash grant would mean more uh, expenses to them since uh, some of the beneficiaries need to travel to areas where they where they are able to um, access their cash grants. So in some areas, there are no ATMs, so they have to travel to um, nearby barangays or municipalities where they can withdraw and access their cash grants. So that was the concern of some of the people, uh, some of the beneficiaries who said that um, they uh, would like to maintain the status quo of grants provision. Um, we also asked the same question from the uh, program implementer side, and uh, it is uh, a common sentiment that uh, increasing the payment frequency is more doable for areas that are, or, that are already using cash cards as mode of payment, since um, uh, increasing the payment frequency would also uh, have logistical uh, repercuss repercussions for areas with uh, uh, that are receiving through uh, over-the-counter means. Um, in addition to the logistical concerns, uh, another concern that was raised by the uh, key informants uh, of the program implementers is that uh, increasing the payment frequency would also incur additional costs for program operations. Uh, there are two sources of uh, this additional cost. The first one is the additional frequency also for the compliant verif uh, compliance verif verification process that happens before the payout. So an additional frequency in the payment also means additional frequency in the compliance verification uh, in the current system. So there are additional uh, costs for that. Uh, and also another cost, uh, Another source of additional cost is the bank service fees. So to illustrate, in 2021, the bank service fees budget is 289 million. So assuming the current system, uh, there 
the bank service fees will also increase if the payment frequency is um, increased. So for the payment modality, um, this is a, an illustration that shows how the cash grants are able to reach the beneficiaries. So there are two modes. There's the bank cash cards, which the beneficiaries are um, able to uh, access, uh, where the beneficiaries are able to access their grants via um, ATM or other point of, uh, point of sale merchants. And then the other mode is the over-the-counter over transaction where they receive the cash grants uh, in the form of cash and they claim it in person. So over the past few years, uh, the uh, direction of the uh, program uh, management is to move towards the conversion to cash card mode of payment from the OTC. So as you can see here in the table, the biggest jump uh, for the uh, increase in share of cash grants happened in 2019. From 56% in uh, 2018, it jumped to 86%. And the mo most recent uh, report shows that 92.6% of the um, beneficiaries already receive their cash grants uh, through cash cards. Okay, so we asked the beneficiaries what their experience is uh, in the two modes of uh, payment. A majority of the beneficiaries uh, agree that cash card is more convenient. Uh, during the over-the-counter, uh, during days where uh, years where they were part of the over-the-counter modes, they mentioned that um, OTC mode is usually uh, less flexible with the schedule because they have to receive the grants in person. There were also more frequent delays uh, for OTC and the waiting time is longer. Uh, although they acknowledge that the cash cards is more convenient, they also mentioned some challenges uh, based on their experience. So they mentioned that uh, they, they have to queue uh, a long time, um, but uh, it's generally shorter compared to OTC. And in some instances, they need to transfer and spend for transportation to look for ATM that is online or has enough cash. Um, in some areas where there is no uh, available ATM or they cannot travel to other areas where there is a uh, an ATM, what the beneficiaries usually do is go to merchants, private um, establishments with point of sale machines where they withdraw uh, their cash grants. Um, the challenge for these areas, however, is that uh, the fees that are collected by these private merchants are not um, uniform or not standardized. So a private merchant may collect higher fees compared to um, uh, compared to other merchants that are uh, farther away from a beneficiary. Okay, another challenge also is the duration of the process of card replacement or correct uh, correction of basic information in the accounts of beneficiaries. Um, according to them, uh, these processes usually take, uh, uh, sometimes take a long time. Um, they suggested that uh, to improve their experience, uh, they need to have better access to ATMs. And if they have access, um, these ATMs should also be uh, reliable, meaning they don't go off offline uh, often, uh, they have enough cash and they are not malfunctioning. Uh, the same uh, suggestions was actually um, provided by the uh, frontline workers of the DSWD. So um, among their suggestions is the provision of satellite ATMs for areas with no land bank branches, um, uh, streamlining of the processing of card replacement and change guarantee, um, and also access to real-time status of update processing and grievance resolution. So uh, what this suggestion uh, means is that uh, they would like to have uh, um, access to the real-time um, status of the updates that they request. And so they are able to provide correct and up-to-date information to the beneficiaries uh, regarding their request for, uh, for example, for card replacement or correct uh, correction of basic information. Um, regarding the topic of uh, digital financing and electronic payment facilities, uh, we asked the opinion of um, the SWD National um, 
uh, key resp uh, key informants and uh, they mentioned that uh, the challenge for uh, electronic payment facilities is the learning curve that the beneficiaries uh, are uh, need to overcome so what their uh, suggestion is instead of moving to other service providers uh, uh, the beneficiaries can take advantage of the um, digital uh, and electronic payment facilities that the land bank is already offering so there's no need to move to other uh, service providers and the only thing that needs to be done is to improve the um, education uh, on uh, and financial lit literacy of the beneficiaries okay so this table uh, shows the results of the analysis of the third wave impact evaluation data um, which compares the magnitude of impact uh, according to the mode of payment of the cash grant so to summarize um, among the outcomes that we looked at uh, there is no discernible impact in the uh, discernible difference in the magnitude of impact except for expenditures what we observed is that um, there is positive impact on the share of food expenditures uh, for those under the over-the-counter mode of payment while there's a positive impact on the share of non-food expenditures for those on cash card mode of payment however these difference um, are small and may not be robust so uh, but generally for all other outcomes there's no discernible difference in the magnitude of impact between the subgroups okay um for the online survey on the social amelioration program um the general finding is that the existing payment system for the four piece allowed ease by which the government disbursed the SOP money to them. So what this means is that because the, the four piece beneficiaries are already in a registry or the list is already um, uh, available in a database and they are part of an existing um, infrastructure of payment facility through their bank cash cards, it is very easy. It was very easy for the government to um, disperse the SAP money to them. Uh, for the summary and recommendations, uh, I will also go through the three aspects of uh, the research. Uh, we start with the grant amount. So to summarize, the amount of cash grants have rem remained at their nominal level starting in 2008 up to 2016, though the real value has already decreased due to inflation. Um, the only uh, recent increase happened in 2017 due to the rise subsidy and RA11301 in 2020. Uh, compared to other countries, the four piece grants are less generous and beneficiaries are hesitant to demand increase in cash grant amounts, but they need, uh, but they admit that their budget is barely enough to cover needs. Um, for a recommendation, what we uh, would like is that for the DSWN PIDs to study the need to um, establish a principle for adjusting the grant amount that is more responsive. So, uh, uh, it, and if it is not possible, an alternative would be to um, provide supplementary interventions such as other forms of cash assistance or um, other programs that would help augment the income of the um, beneficiaries. For the frequency um, based on um, the, the research, the, the evidence is more mixed. Uh, while more frequent payments result in consumption smoothing, less frequent payments uh, result in uh, positive impact on savings and asset accumulation. Uh, also based on the FGDs, there is no strong demand for frequent payments among the beneficiaries that we talk to. There are cost considerations in increasing the payment frequency of the program. Um, these include the cost for operations and compliance monitoring and the cost for the bank service fees unless there are modifications in the current system that the program is doing. Um, so for our recommendation, uh, more than increasing the frequency of the payouts, uh, what is more important is the reliability and predictability of the payment schedules. Um, what we suggest for this to be achieved is that um, to ensure that the payouts are conducted timely um, 
and we reduce the barriers to uh, the access to the grants. Um, we also suggest improvements in the processes and IT infrastructures of both the DSWD and the land bank. Uh, if ever we would like to uh, propose changes in frequency of payment, uh, what we would suggest is to carefully examine it uh, to know if the benefits of this additional uh, of, of these changes in frequency would outweigh, outweigh the additional cost in operations and uh, bank service fees. Uh, for the mode of payment, um, we note that the payment delivery system has improved through the years, uh, primarily due to the conversion of the mode of payment to cash cards. Um, based on the analysis of the third wave impact evaluation, um, mode of payment does not create significant heterogeneity in the impact of the program, um, except for what we observed in the shares of food and non-food expenditures. Um, also, uh, cash card mode of payment is more convenient than the over-the-counter mode of payment. However, there were also it, um, uh, reports of its uh, unique challenges, uh, including lack of access to ATMs, banks in rural areas, long process of card replacement, and gaps in the feedback loop among staff. Um, for our recommendations, we would like the land bank or any um, authorized government depository uh, bank that would be involved in the payment system to expand the network of ATM and local bank branches in the country so that all areas, including the rural and GIDA areas, are reached. Um, the land bank should also find alternative points of cash withdrawal, such as point of sale machines uh, to, co uh, to cover areas without ATMs. Um, although this is already um, being um, uh, accessed by the beneficiaries, uh, what we would like to uh, suggest is that the transactions should be also um, monitored uh, the, and the transaction fees should not be shouldered by the beneficiaries. Um, lastly, we suggest that the processes for resolving payment and cash card related grievances um, should be streamlined and um, the frontline staff should also be um, informed of the real-time real status of these updates and grievances so that they are able to communicate better um, the status of this um, process uh, uh, pending updates or grievances to the beneficiaries. Okay, that was my uh, last slide. Uh, thank you very much. I believe uh, for the open forum, Dr. Orbeta will be joining me too. Um, entertain questions, but uh, I think what follows this is the um, reaction from the discussants. Okay, thank you very much for your time.